Well, hello there. I'm Ray, and this is Duty in Progress, which, if you don't know, is an attempt to justify the over 6,000 hours I've logged in FinalFantasyFourteenOnline.com, and also to give you my sweet, sweet brain juices so you know how to play the game better. As you may or may not know, the way I've been trying to justify the unreasonable amount of hours I have in this game is by getting all my jobs to level cap. So you've seen a lot of my leveling content, and I've noticed in the comments some confusion about what I do to level and like what these things are. So. I thought today would be a perfect opportunity to sit down and discuss one of my favorite things to do for leveling, which is Wondrous Tales. It's a little bit like a challenge log, but it's got more to it. It's a weekly piece of content that you can pick up. You do the content listed there, and when you turn it in, it gives you a guaranteed half level's worth of experience on whatever job you turn it in as, as well as some other rewards that I'm going to mention later. Here are the prerequisites to unlock Wondrous Tales. You need to have a level 60 Disciple of War or Magic job available to you, and you also need to have access to Idleshire, which you will get during Heaven's Word. To unlock the quest, we're going to head over to Idleshire, and we're going to talk to this NPC here, the Unctuous Adventurer. He's got a quest for us called Keeping Up with the Aliopos. Go ahead and pick up that quest and knock it out real quick, and he'll lead you right to Chloe Aliopo. Once you do that, you are free to pick up a journal. Just talk to Chloe, pick up a journal, then you can access the Wondrous Tales in the key item section of your inventory here. You can just right click on it and use it to see what you have listed. Important facts to note, everyone has a different Wondrous Tales journal every week and it's random. Though there is a pattern to it. You're able to pick up a journal each week, but you have two weeks to turn it in. So let's say you forgot to turn it in one week, you can still complete your current journal, turn it in and get the current journal for that week. After two weeks though, they're no longer good and you can only toss them. You can also only hold one journal at a time, so unfortunately you can't pick one up while you already have one. It's important to note that the Wondrous Tales does follow the other weekly reset content, so resets are on Tuesdays at 8 a.m. Pacific. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. This is how it is. You can see on the left side is all the pieces of content it wants us to complete, and on the right side is basically like a bingo game. For every piece of content you complete, you get one sticker, which is placed randomly in the journal once you redeem that content. Sounds kind of weird, but stick with me. In order to complete content, you can either do them synced or unsynced and still get the sticker. You can also wait to get your sticker after completing each duty if you want, or you can redeem it right away. You can only have nine stickers total, which means you have nine chances to make one, two, or three lines, which is really the goal because you get better rewards when you make lines. You'll see down here there are second chance points, and you can also click here to either use second chance points to shovel the position of your stickers, or you can and use the second chance point to redo something you've already redeemed. You can only shuffle the position of your stickers if you have seven stickers or less applied already, and it costs two second chance points to do this. To redo content that you've already done before, it's only one sticker and there's no restriction on when you can do this. Second chance points are gotten from completing content with someone who hasn't yet completed it before, so roulettes are actually a really good way to farm for them. Once you apply your eighth sticker, you will no longer be able to shuffle your stickers anymore. I should mention off the top that the rewards are going to change depending on the patch, but these are the current rewards as of 6.3. So as long as you have nine stickers when you turn in your journal, you are guaranteed half a level's worth of experience on whatever job you turn it in on. Also have a choice between an Allegan Platinum piece, which is worth 10,000 gil, 500 Allegan Tomestones of Poetics, and a time-worn Ophiotora skin map. On top of that, you do get an additional reward for each line you were able to complete. If you have one line, you have an additional choice between one MGP gold card, which is worth 30,000 MGP, one bronze certificate of commendation, and 50 tombstones of the cap variety, which is currently tombstones of causality. If you get two lines, you also, on top of that, have an additional choice between two MGP platinum cards, which are worth 50,000 MGP each, a silver certificate of commendation, and 500 tombstones of the uncapped variety, which is currently Homestones of Astronomy. If for some reason you are blessed by the 12 and get three lines, you have an additional choice of 20 MGP Platinum cards, which is again 50,000 MGP each for a total of 1 million MGP, three silver certificates of commendation, or one gold certificate of commendation. These certificates of commendation can be turned in for different prizes. You can talk to her to see what's available. They sometimes change, but yeah, this is where they are. 
I've only ever gotten three lines once, and I don't know that it will ever happen again, even though I do Wondrous Tales every single week. It's almost like winning the Jumbo Cackpot. It's pretty rare. Anyway, now that we've talked all about the lovely prizes, let's go ahead and look a little deeper at the content. Any content you currently don't have unlocked yet will be grayed out to show you that you don't have access to it. For the sake of explanation, let's look back to my Wonders Tales last week. Also, as a disclaimer, they may change up how journals are laid out in the future as more content comes out and things get shifted around, but this is the current pattern that I've noticed as of 6.3 for what shows up here. Although each journal is different, they are all structured the same way by category. In the first row, you have three leveling dungeons as the first category. So you may be looking at dungeons leveled 1 through 49, 50, 51 to 59, 60, 61 to 69, 70, 71 to 79, 80, or 81 to 89. So three of those will be here. And then the last one is always going to be a level 90 dungeon for the last one. In the second row, there are a mix of alliance raids and normal raids. The alliance raids will be specific, but the normal raids will refer to a tier. For example, it might simply be Alpha Escape, which means any raid in the Alpha Escape raid tier will satisfy the requirement. This week we have Alexander the Creator, which refers to the third tier of the Alexander raid series, so anything with creator in the name is going to satisfy this requirement. Also, just like a fun fact, you can also unsync normal raids if you want, but it can be more difficult depending on how high you go. I am not able to do Alpha Escape by myself in any sort of reasonable amount of time, so I usually just queue for it. Anyway, in the last spot for this row, you will find a selection of two normal raids from the previous expansion. In this case, we have either Resurrection or Descent. Both of those will get the sticker for us. In the third row, we have a normal raid from the current expansion. This week's Wondrous Tales has Obisos, the Seven Circle, or P7N, as it's colloquially known as. Then there's either usually a deep dungeon one or treasure hunt. I can make a different video on those two topics, but to sum up, deep dungeons include Palace of the Dead, Heaven on High, and Eureka Orthos, which is new. Palace of the Dead is the first one you'll unlock in Quarry Mill in the South Shroud, and I think you just have to make it through 10 levels in order to satisfy this requirement. Treasure hunts can be completed by using up treasure maps, like the Time Worn Dragon Skin map here. Um, you do have to go into one that has a dungeon. Not all of them do, so be careful and just look up whatever you have before you proceed. Split between the end of the third row and the beginning of the fourth row is Extreme Trials. On this journal, we have the Bull of Embers, Extreme, Thorn March, Extreme, Containment Bay S1 T7, Extreme, the Pool of Tribute, Extreme, and the Dancing Plague, Extreme. The last entry is always some type of PvP, whether that's Frontlines, Rival Wings, or Crystalline Conflict. So let's get started for this week, shall we? For this week on My Wondrous Tales, I had to complete a dungeon that was between level 1 and 49, so I decided to do the Orm. Veil, which is my go-to, and I always do these unsynced, which if you don't know, unsynced means that it will not sync you down to level cap. So instead of having to do this at level 47, I can do it at level 90 with all my level 90 gear and basically just melt through enemies. You can also just use Duty Finder normally and queue up for it and see if you get put in there. Either way, we'll get you the sticker. But the benefit of unsyncing things is that it goes a lot faster usually if you're above level, like well above level usually. Another benefit is that any gear that drops is going to be all yours, which is great for turning in for company seals. If you'd like to hear more about that, I did make a video on what to do with gear you don't want here. I will link it in the card. So you go through, finish your content, and at the end it does say that you have a sticker that can be applied. If we go ahead and look at our Wondrous Tales now, you'll see that there is an arrow on top of the content we just did, which means we can click it to redeem, or we don't have to redeem it right away, but it is there for us. Then you kind of just proceed down the list of the things that you have and do them at your own pace. In fact, you could just pick up the Wondrous Tales at the beginning of the week and proceed with all your usual roulettes for a few days and just kind of see what you get because you do get put into these duties and that way you don't have to do it like a shopping list the way that I do it. Either way, you may shuffle your stickers a few times, retry a couple things. Personally, I used to retry um, Orem Vale or Wanderer's Palace because it was super fast, but now I realize that maybe I could just do some of the Aroma Reborn extremes, which I can do in under a minute in most cases. But either way, once you get all your stickers, you just go ahead and turn it into Chloe. And depending on how good your luck was this week, you can go ahead and choose which rewards you want. Important note, make sure that when you turn in your Wondrous Tales, you're doing it on the job you want experience on. I mean, 
there's nothing wrong with doing this after you already have everything capped, but for me, since I'm leveling, that is a concern for me. So I definitely make sure that I turn it in on whatever class I'm currently leveling. And there you have it. That's Wondrous Tales. And I hope that makes a little more sense to Sprouts and anyone new to Final Fantasy who's watching this and curious about what the heck I'm talking about when I'm talking about Wondrous Tales. Now you know. If you have any other questions, feel free to let me know. I do realize that a lot of my leveling content can be a little bit confusing if you're not used to seeing all of these pieces of content put together the way that they are. They really lack context, so I'm hoping to give some of that context. Anyway, I think that's all I had for you today in terms of the educational spot, so let's go ahead and get into this week's leveling progress. Welcome to weeks 10 and 11 of leveling. As I mentioned last time, I'm trying out some new ways to go over our progress, hopefully in a more organized and condensed way, since the tutorial sections seem to be getting longer and longer. Anyway, let's get into week 10. Day 1 we did Pixie and Ananta tribe quests as well as a bunch of roulettes. We knocked out leveling, trials, normal raid, frontline, alliance, and MSQ roulettes, which got us a total of... 3 levels! Day two was a lighter day. We did our Pixie and Ananta tribe quests for the day as well as leveling trial and normal raid roulette. For leveling roulette, we got Doma Castle and had a new sage, which made the whole run incredibly painful. If you're new to a class, rather than directly running roulettes, I recommend doing some lower level content to figure out how the class works and builds on itself. Jumping directly into content that's above like level 50 is going to be very challenging on a new job, particularly on a job like Sage where the skill names are incredibly unhelpful in telling what they actually do. For day two we managed to get one level. Day three we did leveling, trials, normal raid, frontline, and alliance raid for roulettes, as well as our pixie and anatta tribe quests. For day three we walked away with two levels. Day four we finished up the week with our pixie and anatta tribe quests and got zero levels. This was our last day of week 10, and in total we managed to get 5 levels! On to week 11. Day 1 we took care of our Wondrous Tales from the previous week because I guess I forgot about it. Did a bunch of roulettes including leveling, trials, normal raid, and frontline, and also finished up our Pixie and Anata tribe quests. With all this under our belt we walked away with 3 levels! Day 2 we did roulettes including Trials, Normal Raid, Alliance Raid, Leveling, and MSQ. From this day we not only got 1 level, but it was also our 80th level, which was initially supposed to be where I was supposed to stop, but I guess I completely forgot so we're still leveling Ninja for a few days. Day 3 we did Wondrous Tales from this week and got a really good match in Crystalline Conflict for that sticker. I managed to personally kill the Dark Knight on the other team not once, but twice. Which is such a personal accomplishment and I'm very proud. Sorry for all the Dark Knights out there, but if I see you in PvP, I'm gunning for you and I'll get ya. Anyways, after Wondrous Tales we got through our roulettes, which were Frontline, Leveling, Trials, Normal Raid, and MSQ roulettes, and then completed our Pixie and Arca Sadara tribe quests for a total of 3 levels! Day 4 we got to work on our roulettes and knocked out Leveling, Trials, Normal Raid, Alliance Raid, Frontline, and then did our Pixie and Arca Sadara tribe quests. It was at this point, after doing Arca Sadara tribe quests twice, that I realized I've already gotten to level 80 on Ninja, but that day we did get 3 levels. Day 5 I decided to pick up Samurai for our next job to level. We started off with a really good round of frontline roulette and then moved on to other roulettes including MSQ, leveling, trials, and alliance raid. We also did some dungeon spam and then our Vanu Vanu tribe quests. We managed to get 4 levels. Which means that this week we managed to rack up a total of 14 levels. Let's review our progress. Here's where we started and here's where we ended. Over two weeks, we managed to get a total of 19 levels. That's all we have for today. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. If you feel so inclined, you may leave a comment, but you do have to be nice to me or else your favorite job is getting a major rework next expansion. I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.